Today's episode of Nerdist News is sponsored by Watch Dogs Legion. Why did Men in Black International crash at the box office? It's been a summer of ups and downs at the box office. The season kicked off way back in April with the highest of highs in Avengers Endgame and recently hit the lowest of lows in X-Men Dark Phoenix. And unfortunately, we must now add another low to that list with Men in Black International. While for the most part, audiences have reacted generally positively to the film, they're not exactly breaking the doors down to see the movie. For its opening weekend, the film only brought in $30 million on its reported $110 million budget, and that doesn't include include its estimated $120 million marketing budget. Add to that the fact that critics are trashing the film and you have a recipe for disaster. So why did Men in Black International fail so spectacularly? Well, thanks to the cats over at The Hollywood Reporter, we're getting a breakdown on how the film broke down. So let's break it down! First up, we've got to go all the way back to the third Men in Black. Similar to International, MIB3 failed to set the world on fire. This left the studio in a pickle. What to do with the franchise? Legitimate pitches that almost made it to the big screen included crossing over Men in Black with 21 Jump Street. However, due to producer squabbles, that pitch was eventually dropped. The next idea was to bring back stars Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith to reprise their roles as agents K and J for another installment, but the price tag on both actors was would have ballooned the film's budget even further. From there, Sony decided to reboot the franchise with new actors, which brings us to Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. Yeah, it's called the uh, Re Revengers. Revengers? The studio sought to capitalize on Hemsworth and Thompson's name recognition and chemistry from their previous work as Thor and Valkyrie in Thor Ragnarok. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, the pair initially came on board to MIB International because of how good the first version of the script was. But from there, things went downhill faster than Edgar downing a glass of sugar water. More. More. <laughs> One of the main reasons for the film's lackluster performance was due to fundamental disagreements between director F. Gary Gray and producer Walter F. Parks. Reportedly, Gray and Parks clashed on the vision for the film, with Parks being one of the producers who launched the Men in Black franchise and Gray attempting to bring a sense of timeliness and modern references to MIB International. This clash led to numerous rewrites, Parks stepping in on directorial duties a couple of times, and Gray almost leaving the project altogether. At one point, The Hollywood Reporter also noted that Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson hired their own dialogue writers. So needless to say, things were going about as well as Agent J helping to deliver a baby squid. You're doing fine, Ace! If all that wasn't bad enough, this tug of war continued because reportedly the studio behind the film, Sony, was completely MIA for MIB. According to inside sources, the studio was an absentee landlord. They were nowhere to be found. However, this had at least one benefit. There were no reshoots, nor was there a complicated post-production process. THR's source summed it up by saying it wasn't a Dark Phoenix situation. It's always good to remember, things could definitely be worse. In the end, Sony showed two versions of the film in its test screenings. One was director F. Gary Gray's cut, and the other was producer Walter Parks's. And since Parks had final say on which version would hit the big screen, it's not hard to figure out why his version is currently in theaters. With all the behind-the-scenes drama on the table, the only question left is, is this the end of Men in Black? Not even kinda. Despite all the drama, MIB is still a marketable and known franchise. Whether it gets rebooted in three, five, or even 10 years remains to be seen. Or as a Sony exec said, Men in Black will be revisited again at one point, either as a series, as streaming, or as another movie. If anything, Men in Black will simply be put on ice for another few years until Sony figures out where to take it next. Cause Damn. But what do you folks think? Did you see Men in Black International? Do you have a favorite MIB movie? And which piece of Men in Black tech would you rather have? The Cricket or the Neuralizer? Let's discuss. Thanks again to Watch Dogs Legion for sponsoring today's episode. Recruit your unique team from the whole city to hack, infiltrate, and fight to take back London. That's right, virtually every single person you see in this open world London is playable and recruitable. Join your friends online with brand new co-op missions and updates. Get ready to join the resistance in Watch Dogs Legion when it drops on March 6, 2020.